Okay, guys. Hey, this is uh, this is Mike with MTRC. Um, had a lot of people ask, uh, calling about uh, refresher on some of the uh, adjustments for setting up the the, uh, the console sewing machine here. And uh, by by popular demand, I'm, I'm making a video now that uh, that's going to walk you through each one of these steps of the uh, the 18 uh, steps adjustments that that are made on this this sewing machine. So. Basically, if you were to take the, uh, the handout that we give in, in, the, in the class here, and it talks you through all the different adjustments in, in, in the correct order, um, we're just basically going to go down here, but we're going to add a, a, a video to each one. So, <clears throat> kind of kind of start off here. It's the the, the machine's actually kind of simple to make, uh, to not to make, but to uh, maintain. Uh, you really only need just a handful of tools here. To, to do this, uh, to do the maintenance, got your Allen keys, your uh, combination of boxed in wrenches, screwdrivers, and stuff like that. And these tools come actually with the package with the with the sewing machine, uh, except for this one, of course. Uh, in, in place of this one's another long green handle one. But but realistically, in order to to do the proper maintenance on this thing, you really only need these tools right here these ones right here okay uh, including this this uh, measuring gauge that, that that we fabricate locally okay so I'm gonna put these back up here <clears throat> so with that there are there are two two manuals that come with this this machine we got what we call the new manual and the old manual, both of them are, are, are digitized and they're in the uh, the pass down log. Um, they're not written in very good English and they're kind of hard to decipher at times. Uh, some of the adjustments that you make are easier to uh, to get done using the new one and some of the adjustments are easier to understand using the old ones. So you may have to use a combination of both of them in order to to get these uh, adjustments made correctly <clears throat> likewise on our adjustment checklist here you know under each each step each adjustment it'll say something like uh, step one feed dog height they'll say new 15 old 10 well those are the page respective page numbers where you will find the uh, location um, uh, to make this this adjustment so for example the adjustment for the feed dog height in the new manual it's on page 15 and in the old manual it's on page page 10 okay so we'll get these out of the way here um, we'll get this out of the way so this this sewing machine here is the the Conso 206 RB5 it's got a little placard on it ours has seems to have fallen off here uh, but it is the 206 RB5 heavy-duty sewing machine <clears throat> um, first thing you want to do is you need to make sure that the machine is turned off uh, it says in the book to unplug it. I don't think that's necessary. Just make sure you, it's turned off and that you don't turn it on accidentally during this uh, during the uh, when you're making the adjustments. Otherwise, you're gonna catch a finger or something in there. Okay, so once we once we make sure that the machine is turned off. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cycle this up and we're going to remove our needle here. All right, just set it off to the side there. Um, now, what we want to do is we want to just kind of hand cycle this thing through, you know, a good five or six cycles. We're looking, we're listening, and we're feeling. And we're making sure that there's there's no binding, there's no metal on metal contact, uh, anything like that. This thing should should cycle through uh, pretty smoothly. Obviously, you're going to get metal on metal right here with the uh, the feed dog and the presser foot, but uh, we're looking for for binding and stuff. And this one here is obviously it's it's not out of out of time or out of whack or anything, so it's it's cycling through pretty well. The first thing <clears throat> first thing we're going to uh, check is the, the height of the feed dog okay which this is our feed dog right this is the feed dog right here so 
as per the manual or the uh, the guide here we're going to have to set our stitch length to minimum our minimum stitch length right here now on the guide it tells you know minimum stitch length maximum stitch length the reason that that we we have that in there is not because it changes anything about the actual adjustment but what the minimum or maximum stitch length does is going to help you identify limits of travel like the highest point of travel for the needle bar the lowest lowest point of travel for the feed dog uh, the most rearward point stuff like that it's really it's all it's going to help you identify that that limit um, but it doesn't affect the adjustment whatsoever <clears throat> so we've set our our stitch length adjustment to the minimum setting and now we're going to set the uh, the feed dog the feed dog to its highest point of travel here okay so we go all the way up and that looks that looks like right there is about the highest point of travel for the feed dog okay so we're going to take our our locally fabricated gauge which this gauge here is <clears throat> 0.78 millimeters thick and we're just going to lay this right next to the feed dog and what we're looking for is this feed dog height right here it needs to be about 0.8 to 1 millimeter above the needle plate right here so optimally you know 0 0.85 0 0.90 so just slightly above the thickness of this gauge right here and I got this gauge sitting on here and as I feel across I feel just a slight a slight step up across the the feed dog so this one here is is, is set correctly but however if, if it wasn't set correctly we would have to make that adjustment up or down so again we want to make sure the feed dog is is in the highest point of travel right right there then we grab our <clears throat> Four millimeter um, hex key. You really only need two two hex keys, a four millimeter and a five millimeter, to do all the maintenance on this thing. So this hex key screw right here, this is what loosens up the feed dog height. So I'm just going to put this in here, probably about like this, okay? And I'm just going to loosen up the feed dog. All right. So if you look up here at the feed dog now. The feed dog, pretty much, I can control the feed dog height just with the hex key right here, moving it up and down. So, with with one hand, I'm going to hold this uh, gauge up here, and I'm going to move the feed dog until it's at the right height. Okay, move it back and forth till it's at about the right height. And once I get it at the right height, I'm just going to lock it down. Okay and a slight step up and so we are we're at the, the the correct height and then I just just cinch it down you don't have to really lock any of these things down gur them down you just need to snug them down so that's pretty much how we adjust the feed dog height everything about this um, sewing machine is is based upon the next the, the previous step so if if you skip a step or if you don't have a certain adjustment done correctly then everything downstream of that all the adjustments downstream of that will not will not be uh, correctly adjusted and and you're going to fight with it so it's very important that, that you take your time and, and you make these adjustments and you get them as 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 accurate as possible okay so that's the that's the feed dog height All right, so now that we have the feed dog uh, to the correct height, what we have to do is we have to uh, make sure that this feed dog uh, longitudinally, forward and backwards, is at the correct position uh, with regards to, relative to the actual needle plate. So again, what we need to do is we need to have our stitch length uh, at the minimum setting, and we need to cycle our feed dog through until it is at the highest point of travel which is about right right there 
Okay. Next, we're going to take our gauge and from the center, from the center of the hole in the feed dog right there to the forward edge of the needle plate right here, it should be 31.5 millimeters. Center of the hole to the forward edge of the needle plate. So these gauges are marked with, you know, exactly 31.5 millimeters from, from this edge to there. So we're just going to put our gauge on here like so, okay? We're going to line up the, uh, the front edge right on the crack of the needle plate there. And we're just going to look, and this one here is, the hole in this needle plate is, 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 is pretty much dead center exactly where it's supposed to be okay but if you had to change it and you had to adjust it which is what this video is about this is how you would make this adjustment okay you need to rock your machine head forward you need to grab your five millimeter allen key and this this key this uh hex key right down or hex screw right down here is what you're going to loosen up in order to adjust the feed dog forward and backwards so I'm just going to loosen this up a little bit okay wow that thing is really tight okay I'm going to loosen that up and then I'm going to just keep this hex key in here all right. So you'll see that now that this thing's loosened up, I can I can grab underneath right here. This is the the bottom side of the feed dog right here, and I can just move this feed dog forward and backwards. All right. And so I come up here on top, <clears throat> put my my gauge right on the crack there, and I just move my feed dog to the rear or to the front until it is the hole is centered exactly where it needs to be and that looks like it's it's about centered right there Tim can you see that is it pretty much centered right right there that look like it's centered yeah okay yep. so I'm just gonna hold that there while I'm holding it I just reach down with my other hand and I lock the uh, the set screw right there. That way, nothing moves. Okay. And I just kind of give it a snug. And like any other uh, any other adjustment, once we make that adjustment, we want to cycle it through, and then uh, we're going to recheck it. Okay. So we bring our feed dog to the highest point. which is right there and we put this in right there right next to it and our hole is pretty much dead center so that's how you yeah. <clears throat> adjust the uh, longitudinal position of the feed dog front to back very simple Okay guys, now that uh, we've got the, the feed dog height set and the, uh, the front to back longitudinal um, position set, we have to insert, insert the needle and I kind of want to talk about this because uh, uh, a lot of guys tend to, tend to get this backwards here. So this is uh, the Conso 206 RB5. It uses a DPX17 or a 135X17 needle system um, and within that system we have several different sizes that, of, of needle that we use. Uh, the largest one that we can use with this is size 24 and the smallest one that we use is a size 16 to pull our uh, little e-thread with. Um, so what's what's important about this uh, making sure that this this needle is correct is because regardless of whether you're using a little size 16 needle or the larger size 24 needle is that this this distance uh, critical distance from the top of the butt of the needle up here to the to the top of the eye is the same distance 
whether you're using size 16 or size 24. And that's that's important because when you go to put this, install this into the needle bar, it always sits, the eye will always be in the same position relative. Uh, therefore, you don't have to keep adjusting the, the timing between the rotary hook and the needle. So when we go to put, uh, put this needle in, we want the long groove of the needle, which is this, this big long groove here on the outside. It needs to be facing outboard. And we want the scarf, which is the, the cutout right in here, should be facing inboard. And the scarf is where the rotary hook goes in and picks up the thread. So we're going to go ahead and install this needle. The easiest way to put this needle in is to lower the presser foot, <clears throat> cycle the uh, machine around until the needle bar is at its highest point. You're going to want to kind of put the needle down into the press her foot a little bit and then raise it up into the needle bar. It's very important that when you put it up in here you seat it all the way up until the needle stops moving. Okay, seat it all the way up. Otherwise when you, when you go to replace it or, or the next person goes to replace it, the timing is going to be off. And then I'm just going to use my two fingers here and I'm going to spin this around until I'm kind of eyeballing it until the long groove is to the left and then I just tighten up this screw here and I'm not really going to tighten it up tight I'm just going to lock it in so that the needle doesn't fall out but I'm going to take a look the best way of, of determining whether your needle is is, is correctly uh, axially rotated is to look over the edge of the side here and look down at the actual long groove and you can I can see that this long groove is 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 perpendicular to the feed dog so it's sticking exactly straight out so so that's good um, so now that I have it correctly rotated um, I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten up this screw here hold the needle just tighten up the screw you don't really have to gorilla grip it the, the screw will just reach its its end point okay and and that's when that's when you're uh, um, you're good so one of the problems that that we have with this specific machine and I've seen it uh, on a couple of the other machines in the classroom is that once you start tightening this this screw down what happens is this this needle here actually rotates a little bit okay so if I look now even though before I tightened it down it was perfectly straight now the needle is the the long groove is actually facing at about this angle here Okay, and that, that's a common, a common occurrence with uh, some machines, not all of them, but some machines. So you have two things that you can do to defeat that. Either you can try and pinch that needle and hold that needle from rotating when you tighten it down, or you can, you can see how much it rotates when you tighten it down and just push that, uh, have, the, uh, have the needle pre-spun to the rear just that far so that when it does tighten down, it brings it into alignment. And that's, that's what I found to be the easiest way of, of doing this. So I have right now, my, my long groove is pointing at about, at about this angle. And when I tighten this needle up, it's gonna, it's gonna rotate it this way and it's gonna be perfectly uh, perpendicular to the needle plate of the, uh, yeah, the, the feed dog, okay? And I can, as I tighten it, I can feel this thing turning in my finger, okay? So now, now the long groove is perfectly sticking out just just like that all right so that's how you that's how you put the uh, the needle in <clears throat> and one other thing is up in the front up here there's a a sight window a little hole that's in the front of the needle bar okay and you can look in there and you can see that the butt of the needle is butted up against the the bottom the bottom of the uh, the needle bar in there and that's how you check to make sure that needle is properly seated so that's installing the needle okay so now that we've got the uh, the needle installed um, uh, one of the last things we need to do you know kind of up top up here with with the uh, the presser feet is to 
straighten and align the, uh, the, the lifting presser foot and the vibrating presser foot. So this machine has, has two presser feet. Um, this, the small one on the inside, uh, I, I know it as the walking presser foot, but the, the owner's manual, they call it the vibrating presser foot. And then you have uh, the presser foot on the outside, and it's a lifting presser foot. So the outside presser foot, all it does is, is it goes straight up and down you know, as it cycles through. The inside presser foot, the, the vibrating presser foot, it actually walks, smashes down, uh, contacts the, the feed dog, and then goes back to the rear so you can see here. The outside presser foot just lifts straight up and down, straight up and down. And I'm gonna adjust the uh, stitch length here so you can see the, uh, the walking presser foot. The walking presser foot moves forward, contacts the feed dog, moves to the rear, lifts the, uh, moves forward and lifts, moves forward and lifts and the outside presser foot if you watch it it just all it does is goes straight up and down that's why they call it the lifting presser foot and the walking presser foot respectively okay so <clears throat> what we have to do is we have to make sure that that both of these presser feet are are straight forward and backwards okay and that there's no there's no can't to because what, what will happen is if you have a can't it will it will make your uh, material want to feed uh, to one side or another the problem that we have is is that in in order to adjust the the inside presser foot it has to be adjusted to the outside presser foot and the outside presser foot we're actually going to adjust later because it's it's one of the steps in the uh, um, in the adjustment process um, but when you do adjust these you may find that you're going to have to adjust the outside press foot over a little bit and then adjust the inside and the outside and inside so you can keep them so you can keep them together because you, you can only move the inside presser foot so far before it starts binding on the uh, the, the actual uh, protrusions of the outside presser foot um, but if you had to adjust the inside presser foot, you know, that is is done just just barely. You have just a little bit of adjustment, and that's done with this screw right here that holds the actual presser foot onto the lifting bar. All right, so you would loosen up this screw here, okay, and you can see that that's about the limit of adjustments that you have with the the inside presser foot because let me lift it up here because it has you can see it's got a flat side on there you know where the, uh, the thing locks on so you can only you can only rotate it a little bit here and there okay so you get this thing on and we're going to go ahead and get it get it down inside <coughs> the lifting presser foot we're going to get it aligned so that it's aligned perfectly with the outside presser foot the lifting presser foot and then we're just going to go ahead and lock this sucker down okay again we don't have to really really grip it we're just gonna tighten it and kind of snug it okay so that's that's how we uh, how we align the uh, lifting presser foot and again you want to cycle you want to cycle or excuse me how, how you align the walking presser foot and you want to cycle it through and make sure that it's not clipping the sides of the lifting presser foot. All right, they shouldn't be binding. They should be free, free moving. And so this one here is pretty straight now. Okay. So that's that. <clears throat>All right, guys. The uh, the next adjustment that we have to make is the relationship between the needle and the hole 
in in the feed dog here so so really when we're when we're when we're looking at a, a perfectly aligned needle it's going to be right in the center of this hole and you can see that this one here is, is clearly to the rear of the center of the hole it, 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 it'll probably work but we definitely want that needle to be centered in a hole that way when you're sewing heavy webbing or stuff like that you know if the needle flexes a little bit it's not the the tip of the needle is not going to hit you know the, the rear of the hole in the feed dog <clears throat> so the way we the way we make this adjustment and it's kind of weird and, it, and this this screws in a uh, a really weird place okay uh and don't ask me why but we have to come back here to the rear of the sewing machine and we have to take off this little cover right here with these two screws and these things should not be gorilla gripped on it should just be you know on and snugged on so we're just going to take this little plate off right here and down <clears throat> excuse me down inside here there's a hole right here okay and if you stick your screwdriver straight in directly back there is a is a screw you need to loosen that screw and by loosening that screw right there you're able to move okay so now that I've loosened loosened that screw back there <clears throat> it's gonna give me the ability to move this needle bar you know forward and backwards alright so I'm gonna go ahead and, 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 and center this needle in the hole and that's about that's about center right there and then I'm gonna tighten this screw back up back here okay and I'm gonna tighten this up while I'm holding this needle bar in place all right and so once I got it tightened up I'm gonna cycle this cycle this thing through and make sure that it's that it's not hitting okay and it moves and we are pretty much centered in that in that hole there now so that's how you make the adjustment uh, the longitudinal adjustment on the needle bar so that it's centered in the hole of the feed dog and of course once uh, once you're done you're gonna want to put your your cover back on with your with your two screws this cover here uh, will only go on one way right these holes in here are not not centered so it's that is not that right there is not the way it goes on the only way it will go on where the holes will line is is that way so and then you just put your screws back in and we're done with that adjustment All right, guys. So uh, the next step that we next thing we have to do here is we have to set the needle bar height. Setting the needle bar height right here <clears throat> is a precursor to uh, adjusting the timing between the needle and the rotary hook. So basically, what what's happened is um, the the engineers, people that have designed this thing, uh, in a couple steps from now, we're going to actually set the timing of the needle and the rotary hook. So what they've done, they've kind of reverse engineered it. They've said, okay, when the needle and the rotary hook, the timing is set correctly, this needle bar height, when the needle bar is at its highest point, should be X amount of distance. And that distance is 22.3 is millimeters. <clears throat> so instead of waiting until um, it's time to set the timing between the needle bar and the rotary hook underneath, and then adjusting this to, to, to make the, uh, the, the timing correct, we're going to go ahead knowing that when this is set correctly down here, the needle bar should be at 22.3 millimeters. We're going to go ahead and set this right now, and that's going to make setting, adjusting the, uh, the timing between the, uh, the needle and the rotary hook much, much easier. 
Okay, guys. So sorry we were we were interrupted by a phone call here. But anyway, so we've we, we've checked this, and uh, our our needle bar height is is correct here. Uh, the top of the eye when needle bar is, is at the uh, the highest point of travel. The top of the eye is at 22.3 millimeters. All right. However, if it was not and we had to adjust that needle bar up or down a little bit, this is how we would do it. We would open up this side panel here. Okay, and as a side note, um, for some reason, a lot of these sewing machines uh, do not have the the wick that's supposed to go down into here, route up through here, come up here, and then and then terminate up into here. Uh, I, I don't know if it came that way from the manufacturer or if people are taking them out or whatever, but they should have a, a wick in there to to lubricate these uh, these metal and metal pieces in there. So. Um, I'm gonna get another video out on showing you how to how to replace those. But anyway, <clears throat> if our needle bar height was incorrect, what we would do is we would keeping the needle bar at its highest point of travel during the cycle, we would loosen up that screw right there, the one that has the uh, uh, that's that's holding the brass compression nut. We would loosen that up, adjust the needle bar up or down while the the actual needle bar. Uh, concentric is is in its upper position get it to where it's 22.3 then we would tighten that down sometimes it's kind of hard to access that screw there uh, like if someone really gurs it down and tightens it so if that screw is really hard to loosen up back there <clears throat> what you're gonna have to do is cycle the machine down and to where that screw is is available or is, is accessible through that little slot right there and then you could loosen it up like that, okay? Still keeping it tight to where the needle bar moves up and down. And then take it up to its highest point of travel again, which is right there. And now you can more easily loosen it up just to the point where you can move the needle bar up and down. And that's that's right there, okay? So. I've got the needle bar at its highest point of travel. Now I'm going to just lift it up until it's at the, the correct height. And that's 22.3. Again, I'm coming across at an angle here so I don't get this thing dipped down into one of the serrations on the needle plate. And that looks pretty good right there. Another thing that you wanna be, uh, be aware of is <clears throat> on the front of the needle bar right here, you've got this thread guide groove. You need to make sure that when you tighten this down that this thread guide groove right there is facing directly at you. Okay, so I've got the correct height. The thread guide groove is, is facing me. So now I'm just gonna just kind of gently lock this screw down. It doesn't take much to get this thing tight to where the needle bar won't move. Okay, lock this thing down. Right. And you don't have to really gur it down, but so that's that's pretty good right there. So, like everything that we do, <clears throat> we cycle it through a couple times and then we check it again to make sure that nothing has changed. So we're gonna go to the highest point of travel. When I'm looking for the highest point of travel here, I'm not looking at the tip of the needle. I'm looking at this hoop right here at the bottom of the uh, the needle bar. It's just easier to see where that thing is when it's at its highest point of travel and that's about it right there. Okay, and so that that thing is right at 22.3 millimeters. So we got the needle bar set. Okay, so one of the last things that you need to concern yourself with is that if now that you have the needle bar at the correct height and it's axially rotated correctly so that this groove is facing you, prior to this maybe that groove might have been off a little bit and now you have it straight which means that you know previously when you put your needle in and your needle uh, long groove was facing directly out you know if you were to correct this needle bar rotate it now your your groove your long groove on the needle is is incorrectly rotated so you want to check your needle again and make sure that the uh, the long groove is still sticking straight out the left and you get the scarf facing straight into the right. Um, 
and so once everything is good to go I would pull this back down and just give it it's already snugged up just give it a there we go and that's good and that's how you adjust the needle bar height All right, guys. The uh, the next step in the whole machine timing thing is, uh, or the, the doing all the adjustments is uh, adjusting the uh, the timing of the the downward motion of the needle with the rearward travel of, of the feed dog. And I have kind of an example set up here. Uh, imagine this would represent the feed dog, you know, moving forward and backwards. And we've got this uh, screwdriver set up to represent a needle and this right here would represent the eye of the needle, the whole needle, and then this, this little part up here is what the uh, is is the scarf. You know, what we're looking for is the bottom of the scarf right here. Okay, that's that's our reference point. So, what we want to do is we want to to make sure that when the needle the needle is on the downward sorry when the needle is on the downward stroke. Okay, and the bottom of the scarf reaches the top of the feed dog that's when the feed dog needs to start its rearward travel okay so you get the needle coming down the feed dog is, is, is either at a stationary point or on its way up soon as the bottom of the scarf uh, reaches the top of the feed dog or just slightly below it the feed dog starts its rearward travel alright so that's what we're looking for so the easiest way to, to see that is to have our stitch length adjusted to its maximum stitch length so that the feed dog has a, a huge amount of travel so it's easier to see uh, when that feed dog starts its rearward travel. So we're just gonna we gotta set to maximum stitch length <clears throat> and now we're just gonna cycle this through here and you can see that the feed dog is is actually moving to the rear slightly early in this case so the feed dog is moving to the rear right there and we're we're barely the needles barely into the feed dog so we're actually gonna have to make an adjustment on this and I kinda noticed this earlier when we were setting the uh, the needle position um, centering it into the uh, the hole of the feed dog I noticed that the feed dog was leaving a little bit early so we'll make uh, make an adjustment for that so one more time here the feed dog is moving to the rear right there right there and it should be moving to the rear right about there so we need to advance the the timing of the needle a little bit faster in the cycle Right, the way we do uh, the way we do that is up here. I've I've opened up this this area here. I took the uh, took took this plate off. Uh, took the uh, oil reservoir uh, screws out and just kind of moved it off to the side, keeping all the wicks and stuff in place and intact. Just kind of moved it off the side so that we can see. So what we're looking for is this this relationship between this line this index line here on this cam and the V ditch on the arm shaft right if your machine is is way out of whack and you're not sure exactly where to go uh, a good a good starting point would be to put this line right in the center of this V ditch right here that would be a good starting point uh, since since we're pretty close and we just need to make a, a fine adjustment here all we need to do is is adjust this just a little bit to, to, to bring that into um, uh, proper timing so what we're gonna have to do is on this cam right here are two screws you got one and two okay so we're gonna have to loosen one screw which is gonna be the uh, we'll call this the lower screw right there rotate this back and we'll barely loosen this screw right here just so uh, we can barely rotate that cam so we're, we're gonna wanna 
take off this back plate, the same plate we used uh, that we took off when we had to adjust the, uh, the needle positioning inside the, uh, the hole of uh, the, uh, yeah, the hole of the, the feed dog. We're going to take this off so that we can access that second screw and loosen it and tighten it when we have our correct setting for the needle and the, uh, the feed dog. So again, this screw right here, we're going to loosen it. Okay, so it's loose. This screw right here, we're going to access from the back back here so that we can visually still see our, our index up here. So I'm going to just barely loosen this just enough so that we can... Oh, and it just... I loosened it too much and it just slid all the way back. So we just went way past where we were supposed to uh, to go. So I'm going to move this back up about right, about right, about right there is where it was. So in order to advance the needle sooner in the cycle, which is what we need to do, we need to move this this index line to the rear. Now, if the needle was too far in and we need, needed to advance the rearward movement of the feed dog earlier in the cycle, we would move this, this slot, this uh, index line, forward, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna put this, I think, I think it's moved to the rear here a little bit, okay? So right there, all right? So now that I have that in the correct place, I, I have access to it, I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of not really girt down. I'm just going to cinch it down so that it'll lock on that arm shaft. And I'm going to check down here and check what my cycle looks like down here now. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I think we went a little a little bit too far because right. There is where it starts moving to the rear, right there, and we're probably about two thirds of the way up the uh, the scarf. So I went just a little bit too far. So now we're going to have to move this index line a little bit forward from from where we just were. So we'll just just kind of ID where that thing is. We're going to loosen this. Okay, and we're going to move it slightly forward. All right, so I just kind of tapped it forward just a little bit here. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this back up. Okay, and I'm going to check this again down here. Right there, so that's that's where it starts moving to the rear, and that's right at the bottom of the scarf. So that's that's perfectly timed, right there. That's exactly where you need it to be. Okay, so we'll cycle it through a couple times, and we'll check it one more time here. So we are moving to the rear right there, and that's right at the bottom of the scarf, and that's that's where we need to be. So. I'm going to lock these screws down here. This one's this one's tight. Okay. I'm going to lock this other one down. Okay. So, again, you don't have to grill or grip them. Just get them get them hand tight and just kind of snug them down. And we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll snug it. And Again, we're going to check this one last time and make sure everything is good. Right there. So we uh, we just got the uh, the downward movement of the needle and the feed dog, uh, the rearward movement of the feed dog timed. And uh, so you want to make sure that when, when it's all said and done, you put everything back into place. Um, up here, you got to put your uh, put your cover back on the back, 
and you got to put this reservoir and we'll, we'll go over this this whole reservoir and and you know, the cover in place um, down the uh, down the road here all right guys so <clears throat> the next adjustment we're going to make is 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 setting the the timing of the machine everybody talks about hey you know when your machine's not working correctly they're like hey did you check the timing did you check the timing 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 you know most people don't have have the first clue what the actual timing of the machine is several things in here that you have to set set the timing of but when most people talk about setting the timing what they're talking about is setting the timing of the rotary hook down here with the actual scarf of the needle that's what people generally are talking about when they're talking about setting the timing of the machine. Um, <clears throat> if I, I, I have this little example here. So this right here uh, represents the actual needle. Obviously we got the, the eye of the needle here and inside this red here is a representative of the scarf of the needle. So we have our, our center lines, our, our vertical center line, our, actually this is our vertical center line that uh, set, uh, centers the scarf from the top and the bottom. And we have our horizontal center line, which horizontally um, is the center line of the needle front, front to back. So the needle would actually go up and down on its axis just like this. <clears throat> this right here would be a uh, representative of the actual rotary hook as, as it comes around. What we're trying to do is is we're trying to set the timing so that when the needle goes down, reaches its lowest point of travel, comes up about two millimeters, the rotary hook is centered um, front to back, centered, and then from the top of the scarf to the bottom of the scarf, the bottom of the rotary hook right here is centered right on that point as it as it comes around so that when the cycle continues the needle the needle starts continuing on its way up and the rotary hook starts continuing on its way forward okay so the needle reaches its bottom point comes up about two millimeters and the rotary hook is right there okay so that's that's our goal that's what we're looking for and so this is how how we do it so let's take a look at this one as, as it sits right now I've already taken off the bed slide the needle plate and I've taken off the um, feed dog just to make it easier to see and to demonstrate um, and quite honestly it's 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 gonna be a lot easier adjusting the timing if you do take all those things off it's just easier to see uh, the scarf and the, the, the rotary hook so <clears throat> You can see the rotary hook, which is this piece, this piece right here. That's that's our hook. That's our the tip of the rotary hook right there. That's what we're looking for, okay? And I have marked in here the actual scarf of the needle. Um, I, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the scarf of the needle, the bottom part of the scarf is is right there, and the top part of the scarf is right right there okay so what we're looking at doing is getting I'm gonna back this up getting the tip of that that rotary hook centered in the scarf both forward and backwards and up and down okay and you can see that this one here is actually sitting a little bit low inside the scarf so we're gonna we're gonna actually make an adjustment we'd make an adjustment anyways but we're gonna make an adjustment and get this get this fixed so in this particular case what we would want is we would want this rotary hook to be advanced just a little bit so that uh, um, it's 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 more in the center of the needle up and down during its rotation okay and that would happen if the rotary hook were to uh, cross that center line a little bit sooner okay so this is how we make uh, adjustment for the for the timing it's very it's actually very very simple the most important thing to remember is that 
We've already adjusted our needle bar height to 22.3 millimeters earlier. Uh, at the height, uh, at, at its most uh, upward movement, the needle bar, the, the top of the, the eye of the needle is at 22.3 millimeters above the needle plate. And we've already done that. So now, really, all we have to do is adjust the rotary hook so that it is forward and backwards uh, centered uh, forward and backwards on the scarf of the needle uh, at the right at the right point when the needle is at the right height okay so what we need to do is we need to rock the motor head forward <coughs> okay and down underneath here you can see the rotary hook this is the actual rotary hook and that's what we're gonna have to um, adjust but what we need to do is, is right here, this, this big thing right here, this is the actual uh, safety clutch right here. This is what releases when you get a jam over there. The safety clutch will break and the motor will free spin so that all this stuff over here doesn't get, uh, doesn't get jammed up and bent and everything. So what we're looking for are these, these three screws right here. One, two, and three. Those three screws right there are the three screws that we're going to need to loosen so that the rotary hook and this uh, shaft will free spin without the machine cycling through. Okay, and that's how we make this adjustment. And you'll notice that <clears throat> on this screw right here, I've already marked this screw because once we get our timing really close to where the the hook is 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 in the scarf there in that general area this screw right here is going to be the only screw that's available for us to to manipulate so what we want to do is we want to loosen the other two screws that are on this this shaft right here that's this screw okay and this screw will loosen these all right, and then this screw right here, we're just barely going to loosen it just enough so that we can rotate the rotary hook, and then when we get it in the right position, we just come in and cinch it down, snug it down so that it locks onto the shaft, okay? So we're going to just barely, barely loosen this, okay? It's barely loosened, and I'm, I'm gonna feel right now, and I can, I can rotate the rotary hook without the rest of the machine spinning. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So now, <clears throat> keeping this thing rocked back, I'm gonna turn this off here. With my left hand, with my left hand on the rotary hook, adjusting the, uh, the forward and backwards uh, spin of the rotary hook, and my right hand over here I'm going to cycle this thing down through, okay? And the book states that once it reaches its bottom, bottom limit of travel, you want to come up about two millimeters, okay? Well, we don't, we don't really need to measure that now because we've already set the 22.3, okay? So really all we need to do now is get this, I'm going to have to put this light on here. So what I what I need to do is I need to <clears throat> cycle this up and down until the rotary hook is centered in the scarf with my right hand and with my left hand I center it forward and backwards. Okay? So left hand rotates the rotary hook forward and backwards. Right hand rotates the cycle of the uh, machine so that we center it up and down. Control debts here in a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of get my head in here so I can see. So we are right there. About centered. So if we can maybe zoom in that it, zoom in on that Tim, I don't, I don't know if it's gonna allow you to. Does that does that help? Can you see that? Can you see it? Like, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we are we are good to go right there, and so 
down underneath, I'm going to the the screw that is the only one that's accessible. I'm just going to kind of snug it down. Okay, so we're locked down. And I'm going to cycle this through a couple times, and we're going to check our check our settings again. All right, so make sure that <clears throat> I, I I didn't say this, but the needle needs to be on the upstroke when you set your timing. It has to be on the upstroke. Okay, so we'll look right here. So the the needle is on the downstroke. It reaches this bottom. It starts coming up. It's about two millimeters up. And as the the hook as the hook passes by the scarf, the bottom, the very very tippy bottom of the the scarf, is just about centered on the needle front to back and top to bottom in the scarf. Okay, that is a timed machine, and that's how you set the timing. It's pretty simple. And then you got to make sure that you come back and and tighten down your your three screws here. So you tighten them up and then you just kind of snug them down. Do this one, tighten it up, and then just give it a snug. And then the first one that we cinch down, tighten and snug. And that's how you adjust the timing with the, uh, the needle and the rotary hook. Okay guys, the uh, uh, next point of adjustment that we're going to make here is the lateral distance between the scarf of the needle and the rotary hook. And so we have it set right here, we got the, uh, the, the hook right in the middle of the scarf here. And, and, and really what we're looking for is this distance between the needle and the scarf. And that distance is very, very small. The book says it needs to be between 0.02 and 0.1 millimeters. That's correct, 0.02 to 0.1 millimeters. Now, 0.1 millimeters is about the thickness of a sheet of like 20 pound regular copy paper. So this distance right in here is very, very minute. All right, so in order to, in order to adjust that distance right there what we need to do is we need to loosen we need to loosen the rotary hook up from we need to loosen the rotary hook right here from the shaft and we're gonna move the rotary hook in or out until we achieve that correct distance right so how we're going to loosen the rotary hook up is there are two screws one screw is right there you can see it and the other screw is right there okay now one of these screws sits in a a v ditch that's on that's on this the shaft that's extended out here and the reason one of those screws is in a v ditch is so that when you loosen them uh, both screws and you need to adjust them in and out it's not going to allow the rotary hook to rotate axially which would then screw up your your timing that you just got done setting so it keeps it in the v ditch V-ditch keeps that thing uh, uh, from rotating axially and so all you can move is laterally in and out. So <clears throat> one of the first things that you need to do is you need to make sure that the top screw here is in the V-ditch. Uh, the way you do that is just keeping, keeping the bottom screw loose. Just undo the top screw, take it all the way out and look and see if when this thing is, is seated that there's an actual ditch that's in there like a, a groove in this in this uh, shaft here if it's not then the bottom one is in the V ditch and so you need to loosen the bottom one loosen that bottom screw um, and, and and rotate the shaft around and put the top screw in the V ditch it should come that way from the manufacturer sometimes it does not found a few that haven't but the top screw needs to be the screw that fits into that V ditch Okay, so uh, this one I've already checked. This you're gonna have to believe me on this. This one here is already in the V ditch, so I'm just gonna go through the process of adjusting the uh, the hook in and out so that it's the uh, the appropriate distance uh, from the needle. So first thing I'm gonna do is 
let's see it here. There we go. I'm going to rotate, I'm going to loosen up the bottom screw here all the way. Okay, so it's nice and loose. I'm going to loosen up the top one just enough so that I can move this rotary hook in and out. And so you can see now that this rotary hook goes in and out, but I, I can't I can't move it. Well, it's, I can move it a little bit because it's loose in the V-ditch, but once it tightens up, it'll, it will draw it right back down into the V-ditch, but I can't loosen it, I can't uh, rotate it axially without, uh, without it being uh, stuck to the shaft there. So now I'm gonna come up on top of <clears throat> up here so we can see. I'm going to come up on top of the, the machine up here and you can see, maybe Tim if you come up over my left shoulder here, okay, you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm moving the hook in and out, in and out, in and out, okay. So what I'm looking for is just to where the hook is just barely touching the needle okay and you don't want to have it touching the needle to where the needle bends and flexes outboard you want barely touching the needle okay and then just slightly slightly move it off the needle enough to get a sheet of paper through there all right and sometimes it's easier to kind of stick your finger behind there and you can see that you can see that distance with your finger behind there and that distance is pretty good right there Okay, so once I get that set, <clears throat> I'm going to use my screwdriver and I'm just going to gently, without moving the rotary hook, just kind of snug it down. Like every other setting that we do, we're going to cycle this through a couple times and we're going to, we're going to check it and make sure that it's, that it's still correct. Okay. So that looks that looks correct from the eye. I'm gonna take a sheet of paper right here and I'm gonna stick this down in there and I can I can barely get a sheet of paper in between that rotary hook and the scarf of the needle right there. Okay. That's what we're looking for. So now that I know that it's set correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and, and tighten up the bottom screw. And we're going to tighten up the top screw. All right. And one last snug here. Okay. <clears throat> and the last thing that you're going to want to do is is double check and make sure that you haven't you have not affected the actual timing. So I'm looking at the timing and the uh, rotary hook, the bottom of the rotary hook is, is pretty much centered on the scarf. So my timing has not changed. So that's how you set the, the distance between the rotary hook and the scarf of the needle when it comes through. Guys, this is a uh, kind of a, a fill-in edit here. I, I I did or I'm doing now for a, a video we did uh, uh, a day or so ago. Uh, forgot to talk about this uh, uh, adjusting this thread release cam right here. Um, this you have to adjust this cam uh, before you actually make the adjustment for the thread release finger and the bobbin opener over here, which is in the very next video. So. Like I said, this is kind of a, a, a back edit here that we're that we're doing. So, one thing that you have to make sure of is that um, on this cam right here, there are, are two screws. There's we got one and two screws right there. This screw right here, this screw that's next to this this S on this cam, this screw needs to be in the the V ditch that's on this that's on this uh, rotary hook shaft right here and you can't see the v-dish because it, it only it starts 
about right here and it goes over to to here so the only way you're going to be able to see this is to to keep this top screw tight and then just release uh, loosen this screw take it completely out and look in there and identify whether this screw is in the actual V ditch that ditch of the, uh, the shaft if it's not then you need to loosen the uh, the second screw up here and spin this uh, cam around until this screw is in the V dish and then you, you lock it down and then you put your other screw back in um, but you, you definitely want this screw, the screw that's closest to the S in the V ditch of the rotary hook shaft that goes through here. So we'll get on to the, uh, to the adjustment now. All right, folks, uh, now that we have the, the timing set, the, the actual rotation, the timing set of the rotary hook to the needle, and we have the lateral distance set between the rotary hook and the scarf of the needle, the next thing that we have to do is we have to adjust, uh, make the adjustments for basically the, the relationship between the rotary hook and the bobbin case opener and the timing of of when the, the thread comes comes around the bobbin and, and, and comes up through. So there's there's two adjustments that we're gonna have to make here. One is this finger of the uh, the, the the bobbin opener, the, the bobbin case opener right here, the thread release finger. And the other one is gonna be up top up here, the, the notch in the bobbin case, the notch in the bobbin case and the uh, the tab up here so the notch in the bobbin case and the tab right there that's the second adjustment that we're going to have to make all right so all of these things okay so all of these things have to work and they have to work uh in the correct sequence and at at, at the right time in order for the the top thread when it when it gets picked up by the rotary hook and, and comes around over the bobbin so that it will actually release and 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 be allowed to release and be pulled back up by the uh, thread take up lever so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to set this distance here between the uh, thread release finger and the actual this, there's a protrusion back here behind it um, on the actual uh, bobbin case so what we need to do is we need to take a, a four millimeter allen key and we're just going to insert it right here and we're going to loosen this up and this thing here will pull right out okay and this fork right here that fits on this cam that makes this thing go go forward and backwards okay just just pops right off all right so I'm just going to put it back in here and kind of show you what happens when you cycle cycle the machine and why we have to make this adjustment so you can see that as as this thing goes around the thread release finger moves forward and backwards from the front to the rear and it hits the protrusion that's underneath there at a certain point and that opens up the um, uh, the notch in the bobbin case up there and allows the thread to come up so if we we don't have this timed right it's not opening at the right spot um, it's not going to let the thread release and you're just going to get a jam all right so we see this thing going forward and backwards forward and backwards okay so we're going to set that timing here in a minute but what we're worried about right now is just this distance that we have between the thread release finger and in the bobbin case right there okay that distance is set by way of this the shaft right here okay so basically if I need this it, it states in there that this distance right in here needs to be between 0.7 and 0.9 millimeters okay so that's a concrete number the takeaway is that 
you can see that this little protrusion right here is not very not very big it doesn't stick off very far so what we want is we want to make sure that the tip of this this finger right here is is hitting that protrusion and pushing it to the rear when it needs to but the tip of this finger is also not so close that it's hitting the rest of the bobbin case right here so the takeaway is is that when we have this over here we want to make sure that there's enough material of the finger hitting that protrusion that it that it works but the tip of the finger is not so far in that it's going to hit the actual bobbin case or any part of the rotary hook when it goes around all right so this one here actually probably could be a little bit a little bit closer to the bobbin case that way um, but it's it, it's not it's not so so far out that we're gonna make an adjustment um, <clears throat> but if you had to make an adjustment you would you would what you would do is you would take your small screwdriver stick it in here I'm gonna take this out so you can see and you would loosen this screw this right in here okay there we go right there you would loosen this screw and you would pound once you got this loose you would pound you would take a, a dead blow hammer something other than metal and you would hit this bearing right in here the shaft and move it left or right to adjust your distance away in this case I would have to pound this bearing this way a little bit to make this just a little bit a little bit closer this one's fine it's it's within the tolerance um, and uh, once you get it there you would make sure that you lock this back down to keep this bearing uh, the shaft from from moving left or right okay and uh, another note is <clears throat> probably before you did that you would want to take your two and a half millimeter hex key and and loosen loosen this right here and make sure that this finger is flush with the tip of this tip of this uh, shaft right here so loosen this up get it flush with the tip of the shaft this one's pretty good and then you would tighten it then it shouldn't change anything but then you would stick it back in make your adjustment left or right um, lock your shaft back down okay and then you would put your your fork color back on okay put your fork color back on and and, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to squeeze these two together okay because if you don't you could get a little bit of a uh, little bit of separation over here all right and with that little bit of separation now this thing has the ability to move laterally and when when it goes around it's not not gonna you're not gonna hit the protrusion okay so we got this slack in there we don't want that slack so make sure when you when you put these together that you squeeze both the fork as well as the uh, thread release finger together and then tighten it up okay so now yeah. there we go so now we have this distance properly set so that it's hitting the protrusion on the bobbin case opener and uh, we're good to go so now we have to adjust the timing of when it hits that thing uh, relative to the, uh, the cycle of the machine all right guys this is uh, this is actually step number 9c 9 Charlie here so now that we have the uh, thread release finger uh, in its correct position laterally in and out what we have to do is we have to set this so that 
when it is at its uh, furthest point of travel to the rear, it's it's hitting the the uh, protrusion on the the bobbin case holder, opening the actual notch up here in the bobbin case, centering the tab. There's there's a tab up here that should be centered in the notch of the bobbin case holder, uh, which will allow the thread to come up at the precise moment, and the thread's going to come up on both sides of the uh, the tab uh, inside the notch there. So what we have to do is we have to first we have to set this at its rearward uh, most point of, of, of travel and the way we're going to do that is is if you look over here there's a, a, a bell shaped bell shaped cam alright so this right here is the bell shaped cam that I'm talking about alright and we got the, the bottom of the bell right there and it just goes around and you can see that the fork and the uh, thread release finger as this bell shaped cam comes around it, it moves the fork and the thread release finger forward and backwards. All right. So, at the rearward, most rearward point of travel is when the bottom of this bell-shaped cam, which is right here, is facing directly to the rear of the sewing machine. All right. Just to make things kind of easier to see, I'm going to just kind of divide this uh, bell-shaped cam here in half. I'm just going to put put a line, a line on here, about halfway, roughly. It's not not perfect, but okay. So so when the middle of that bell-shaped cam or that line is facing to the rear, in which it is right now, that is the most rearward point of travel for the uh, the uh, thread release opener. Okay. What we need to do now is with this in this position Tim if you want to come over to the other side now so with this in this position what we need to do is we need to loosen because right now I can't I can't move this we need to loosen this so that I can I can move this independently and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the thread release finger to the protrusion on the bobbin case holder, right? And so when I when I pinch them, I can move them together as one. They are touching and they are moving as one. So now what I need to do is pinching those together, I need to move the holder, the bottom case holder up here so that the notch in that bobbin case holder, which is right here, this notch, is centered over this tab right here, or the tab is centered inside the notch. Okay? So if I move it too far to the rear, you can see the notch. Does, does that help with the light or without the light? without the light. With, that's better? Yeah. Okay. So you can see when I push it all the way to the rear that the tab is now touching the forward part of the the, uh, the notch and if I pull it back this way, or excuse me, it's touching the rear. If I pull it back this way, it's touching the forward part. What I want is I want that tab centered in that notch in there. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna... And you notice I left... Just keep it up there. I, I left the Allen key inside the uh, the screw down here so that once I get it once I get this set I gotta stick my head down here so I can see once I get it set centered in there I'm pushing these pushing the uh, pushing the thread release finger and the fork together okay to keep them tight against this bushing and then I'm just gonna lock it down while this is centered up here okay All right, so I think that's centered. Yeah, that's pretty well, pretty well centered there. 
All right, so what we have now is we have our, the furthest extent of travel of the thread release finger is at the furthest extent of travel. When that happens, we have our, our tab up here, tab of the, uh, the uh, bobbin holder is centered in the notch. And that's, that's what we want so that at that point, the thread is able to come, the thread actually goes around both sides of this tab right here. So one piece of the thread, uh, the top thread as it goes around and, and it gets picked up by the rotary hook and it comes around when the thread gets pulled back up by the uh, uh, thread take up lever, one piece of thread comes up this side, the other piece of thread comes up this side. So when this is at this point, the thread has to be able to come up both sides of that, of that hook that tab there and so if this tab is touching one of these sides it's going to jam the thread up and, and one side of that thread is not going to be able to, to, to come up through and you're, just, you're going to have a mess down there. So that's how you make that adjustment. Okay. All right guys so our, our next adjustment here is the clearance between the feed fork connection and the feed fork collar. collar. So what we're looking at, I've already taken the, uh, the uh, stuff, the covers and stuff off the uh, oil reservoir up top here. So what we're looking at is we're looking for the height of this bar right here, the feed fork connector above the collar. You can see that the, the collar itself has a oil wick in it. Okay, that oil wick is designed to be transferred from from this wick that it actually comes up in the oil reservoir and it's uh, squashed between the collar and that wick right there when it when it reaches its its highest point of travel so if that gap is too big we're not getting any oil transfer into the lower one and if it's too small you're going to end up burning you know possibly breaking that that collar or the connector right there so I personally have never had to adjust any of these. It's one of those things that you know, set at the factory and it's usually pretty good unless somebody jacks with it. So unless someone has jacked with it, just take take a look at it. Make sure that, that the uh, this wick right here that runs underneath it, you know, and this is the actual, the, uh, the two ends of the wick right here. They go down and around and back up. Uh, just make sure that they get compressed in there uh, and that's how you get your oil transfer. If, uh, if it's too big or if that gap is too big or too small, then you just need to loosen up the two uh, jam nuts, you know, this one and the one that's back down in there and using a Phillips screwdriver through this hole right here, you would you would just un unloosen it. That would that would create more gap and you tighten down your jam nuts. Or if it's too too big, too big of a gap, you would tighten it down and uh, tighten up your jam nuts after that. So, I also wanted to take this opportunity to show everyone that the proper way of, of resetting this, this oil reservoir. We've got all kinds of wicks and stuff, craziness going on here. Um, <coughs> we should have, let me get some line on this thing here. We should have a, a, a single wick that goes uh, down one hole around the uh, feed fork connector and then back up this hole. We've got this wick which is tied off on the bottom down here. It goes, goes uh, out this side here and it goes into the actual flywheel um, and you can see it if you're to pop off this little uh, little button right here and it's one of the one of the oiling points. The third wick that we have goes into here and it feeds the uh, the top uh, operating operating shaft right? and this is actually it. I'm gonna bend this back through and, and get it put in here. So you want to make sure that when you, when you go to move these things around that you're not pulling the plastic cover out of the actual um, channels and stuff like that, keeping all these wicks as, as best you can in the correct uh, place. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and, and uh, pull this one back through. I'm going to keep these things from, from popping out here. And our, our wick down below here should just pop right in there we go okay 
So we get these things pulled in here, get all these things laid up. We got our, our big piece of felt right here that holds, I'll put this over here. So my fingers are getting oily here, okay. So this should 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 lay in here just like just like so, okay. So now we have to put <clears throat> our two screws in. The first screw is this this little machine screw over here that holds the uh, stainless steel oil reservoir in. So we're gonna we're gonna put this screw in, but we're not gonna tighten it all the way. We're gonna keep it a little bit loose so that we can manipulate the oil reservoir while we're putting in. So that's tight. We'll just keep it a little bit loose here so we can still maneuver this thing around so we can line up this hole over here. When you go to put the cover on, okay, so the cover goes on just like this, and you have this, this disc, um, this washer. The washer is not flat. It has a, a, a raised edge on it, okay? So the, the raised edge needs to be up, kind of like a Chinaman's hat. When it goes on to the screw and the screw has a uh, a little uh, uh, shaft on it right there so the washer and the thickness of the cover needs to be on the shaft so when you go to put this in what you want to do is is you get this kind of kind of tight in here get it screwed in and you want to lift up on the lid okay and make sure that the lid is the lid and the washer are up on that shaft of the uh, the, the screw. So there we go. And then you can tighten this thing down. Okay. And when you get it get it pretty close to being tight, you want to come back over now and just snug that screw down and. This screw over here, you don't want too tight. Um, just get it a little bit tight. You should be able to manually just open this, this lid up right here. It's got a little detent right here that, that fits in this, this hole. Uh, it keeps it in place. So you should be able to just manually move this back, look at this stuff, oil that stuff. And that's how you put that lid back on the cover. Okay guys, so we've we've got the majority of the easy adjustments done now. Uh, today we're going to talk about the, the final three um, actual major adjustments here uh, on this machine. These ones here are a little bit more difficult than, than uh, the previous ones. So the first adjustment that we're going to talk about and that we're going to do today is the actual height of the lifting presser foot. <clears throat> when it's when it's lifted up with with the, uh, the, the the press foot lifting lever back here. So what we're talking about is is this height right in here when it's lifted up to the first first locking position. And make sure that when you do this, you don't have it locked up into the upper second locking position. We only want to go into the first first locking position. All right. So the height <clears throat> that the bottom of this presser foot right here should be from the uh, the needle plate when it's lifted up in that first position is eight and a half eight and a half millimeters all right and so I've got uh, I've got this gauge right here <clears throat> and I'm just gonna put this gauge on the side I'm gonna look get it get it flat across here and look straight down and I can see that this one here is pretty much right at eight and a half millimeters okay however if it if it was not as as part of setting up the presser foot height when it's operating when it's actually sewing you need to have the outside the uh, the lifting presser foot set correctly when it's lifted up in order to get the proper proper height on the presser feet when it's when it's actually sewing and which is which will be the next adjustment that we make so let's uh, let's just pretend that this is uh, this is not at the the correct height so I'm going to go ahead and lift this up into the first position <clears throat> and right up here we have a 
a, a screw and this screw right here goes all the way down and it presses on this this long leaf spring right here down underneath the uh, the arm of the sewing machine and you can see uh, right right there I don't know if you can see it or not but right there is the the bottom of this screw and this screw presses on this leaf spring and this leaf spring comes over here and this leaf spring presses down on the lifting presser foot and that's what provides tension for your lifting presser foot so what we have to do is we have to relieve uh, release this tension so that we can adjust this, this the height of this presser foot so actually what we're going to do is we're going to put the presser foot down so there's less tension on it <clears throat> then we're just going to undo this screw here release this screw okay so that there's there's no more tension on it and if I look in here I can see that that, that leaf spring is yeah the, the screw is completely up so there's no tension on it now I'm going to go ahead and, and lift up the uh, presser foot and yeah, it definitely has lost all of its tension so the screw that we need to <clears throat> To loosen in order to release the lifting presser foot the outside presser foot so that we can move it up and down to the correct height is is this screw right right here right here can you see that Tim that screw yeah, right there yeah okay so I'm gonna just go ahead uh, normally this is this is easier done from behind the sewing machine. We have kind of tight quarters here, and and Tim, the video man, is taking up the majority of the space back there. So I'm going to try and do this from uh, from over top here. So I'm just going to crack this loose here. All right. So we have a loose lifting presser foot. Now we are able to lift this presser foot up and down, okay, as we need. So we are in the first lock position up, and we need to move this thing up to about eight and a half millimeters. <clears throat> All right. So I have my gauge right here. And we need to go we need to go a lot higher than that. Okay. And why is this stuck? There we go. Okay, so I think I went just a little bit too high. So you're gonna have to get your head down. You're gonna have to look directly directly across the bottom of this presser foot and I'm just about a millimeter too high so I'm just going to kind of tap it down there we go and, and and again with this gauge you don't want it sitting directly across these serrations you want it diagonally across so that it's so that it's not uh, tipping down in and, and, and skewing your your distances so Right there, we are. We're at just just under nine millimeters. You know, I I don't know that we're going to be able to get it any closer than that without taking it too far past. So, about eight and a half millimeters is 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 what we're looking for. So, also this is your opportunity. We talked about this earlier when we were talking about straightening the uh, uh, the presser feet. So this is your opportunity if your presser foot was was not straight to go ahead and kind of turn it just a little bit okay while this screw is loose up here so we can turn this thing just a little bit before we tighten it back down get it get it parallel all right so we're good I'm gonna check this one last time make sure we didn't skew this and we're yeah we're, we're about we're about eight and a half so it's pretty pretty well adjusted and then we're just going to kind of gently tighten this down okay and <clears throat> what we're going to do is cycle this through 
Okay. Just, just stop it just about anywhere you want. It doesn't matter. It's going to come up to the same height anyways. Lift it up, and we're going to check it again. And make sure that we're still at, at eight and a half, and we're we're just 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 under eight, or excuse me, just under nine right there. So, so we're we're pretty darn close. We're probably within two tenths of a millimeter off, which is pretty good. So, once we have we have that set and and we're certain that it's good we're gonna go ahead and and finish tightening this screw here so again you just get this thing tight you know and just kind of kind of give it a snug and it it'll stop we have to lower the presser foot now we have to put our tension on this so and this tension thing here you don't you don't really need a whole lot of a whole lot of tension on this it's kind of you're kind of going to go more for feel than than anything and it shouldn't be overly difficult to 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 lift this up with your hand um i don't, I don't know what an actual pound is but uh or excuse me the the poundage of this lift should be but that right there i think is a little bit just from from experience a little bit too heavy so we're going to loosen it just a skosh and that's that's about good right there okay also this the tip of this screw this tension screw that goes down and 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 touches on this uh, this leaf spring right here it's a it's it's an anvil so if you would imagine the tip of this screwdriver looks like the anvil of the tip of this screw. So as you're rotating this screw, okay, the anvil is turning laterally and then uh, and then across the actual leaf spring, and then as it turns. So when when you end up um, as you turn it, because the leaf spring is going down at an angle, as you turn it and you turn it like this, only the back portion back here is touching the leaf spring so wherever you stop you always want to make sure that that anvil is across the leaf spring front to back just like this so you have the whole the whole uh, piece of the anvil pushing down on that leaf spring and you can you can feel it you can feel when it when it when it bites into the backside and then it'll release that's when it's across and so I can I can do this here I can feel it right there that's a cross right there that's that's a cross so it's, it's locked into place forward and backwards so <clears throat> that's how you uh, set the uh, the height of the, the the lifting presser foot when it's lifted up with the lifting lever um, we just adjusted the height of the lifting presser foot when it was uh, lifted with the uh, lifting lever back here. So now the adjustment that we're going to make is the actual operating heights of these presser feet when it's when it's actually sewing. These presser feet should operate. They should their their maximum height when they when they come up should be the exact same height. So the walking presser foot or the vibrating presser foot and the lifting presser foot should lift and come up and stop at the exact same height. Both of them should be the exact same. That's what we're trying to get. And that operating height is is going to be somewhere between three and a half to four millimeters. That's the optimum height there. What's important to understand is that when we when we make this adjustment to get these things so that they're operating at the same height, uh, the only adjustment that we're going to make is the adjustment for the vibrating presser foot, you know, the uh, the middle walking presser foot here. Uh, we can't adjust the height of this, uh, the operating height of it. But what happens is, is that because of the way this is cammed right here on this L bracket, these these um, the two different presser feet, they work inversely um, inversely proportional. So. Basically, what happens is you can see that when the 
the lifting presser foot is on its way down right here and it reaches its limit of travel it can't go down any further because of the needle plate here this cam right here continues out and the only thing that can happen is the lifting of the vibrating presser foot here okay so it cycles through the vibrating presser foot starts going down when it reaches its limit of travel and it, it touches the needle plate here this this cam back here continues forward and the only way that it, that it can go is to lift up the lifting presser foot so that's kind of how those things work in concert so because they work that way whenever whenever we're making an adjustment on the vibrating presser foot the walking presser foot here whenever we lift it lift it up and change its operating height it decreases the operating height of the lifting presser foot inversely if we were to lower the height the operating height of the walking presser foot it would raise the height of the lifting presser foot so when we measure these two here here in a few minutes and we have a a, a difference of operating heights in there we don't necessarily want to bring the walking presser foot directly to the height of the lifting presser foot we need to bring it halfway because by lifting one up it reduces the other or, or, or lowering one it raises the other so they work inversely so we're gonna do that here in a second but before we get started the the first thing that we need to do so so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna adjust the individual operating heights of these two uh, presser feet but before we do that we need to set the overall height that they need to be okay uh, the height of both of them and, and we do that back here um, using using this this uh, this cam right here with this wing nut so we're kind of we're kind of stepping ahead of ourselves here and we're gonna we're gonna basically get this set get the general operating height set um, and it's gonna make us it's gonna make it easier for us to adjust individually the operating heights of the individual presser feet so this right here and we'll do this again once we're done but what we need to do is we need to get us in the ballpark here so what I found is when you undo this uh, this wing nut here and, and on some it's just a uh, it's a, uh, a hex a hex a hex nut over here what you're gonna want to do is is get this positioned uh, over here we have it's in a uh, kind of like an arc slot right in here it's an arced slot what you're going to want to do is is get this bolt positioned just slightly above center and I'm going to look down the side here and you know, stay back there Tim for a second I'm going to look down the side I'm going to get this just above center right here okay so we're we're just above center and that's going to be uh from my experience about where we need to be for the overall height okay so a couple things about this particular uh wing nut back here you can see that that there is a potential that this wing nut could hit the uh this is the uh, the knee lifter lever so when I'm when I'm, I'm I'm moving this with the knee to lift up the presser foot this bar right here <clears throat> could be getting in the way of if, if that wing nut was turned just slightly slightly uh, clockwise a little bit more that wing nut would would hit this so it's important that once you tighten this down that you ensure that that this thing is that the wing nuts not going to hit that bar um, when it's at the correct height if it is uh, what you may need to do is is you may need to get a another washer to put in here to uh, change the the final locking position of this wing nut so that it's it's horizontal and and then it won't hit it won't hit this uh, this one here seems pretty good we got I don't know probably three sixteenths of a of a gap in there so we're, we're good on that one okay so that's just a precursor set before we actually go into the adjustments for the operating heights so uh, Tim is going to take 
take a look, take a view right down the uh, the line here and show you what we're talking about, having it slightly above center. So you can see how in that, that arced slot there, we have this set just slightly above center. Okay, can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right, <clears throat> that's just a precursor. So now what we're going to do is you, you, you're going to have to have to get down here and you're going to have to start measuring heights of your presser feet. So doesn't matter which one you do first, but you're going to have to measure the overall height of each presser foot as it reaches its maximum height. Okay, so we'll just do this one first. That maximum height is right right there. So I'm just going to use my gauge. I'm going to look straight down the bottom of it and we're going to call that about three and a half. Okay, so so the lifting presser foot is about three and a half millimeters. And this one here is probably probably set right. So now for the vibrating presser foot, the walking presser foot, the middle one, the little one, whichever whatever you want to call it, you're gonna have to look straight down the throat here. And which is what I'm doing. I'm going to find the highest point of travel, which is right there. And I'm looking and yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one's the vibrating presser foot is set at 3.5 millimeters too. So they are they are both correct right now. Okay, and that's about the, the actual height that, that you want them, okay? But that's not what this video is about here. This video is about fixing problems like this. So um, I'm going to show you how, how we actually change the, the operating height of the vibrating presser foot. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut this here because we don't need this anymore. So before we make any adjustments, we're going to want to release the tension right here off of the vibrating presser foot. And so just, you know, if you take it out too far, it'll pop off like that. You don't really need to bring it out all the way. Just, you know, have it in so that there's a couple, a couple threads right there. So that's, that's pretty good. We're going to take our uh, boxed in wrench here and we're going to use the 10 millimeter end and this right here is is the actual nut that we need to loosen in order to to be able to um, raise or lower the vibrating presser foot without cycling the machine so first thing i need to do is i need to get the vibrating presser foot at its highest point of travel okay actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to induce a, uh, a deficiency in here so that you can see um, the difference in the the travel heights so Tim if you would down here just kind of look look from the side and see that these things are are both operating at about at about the same height okay they go up to three and a half millimeters a piece. They operate at about the same height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the height of the walking presser foot, which should decrease the operating height of the lifting presser foot. So just stay right there. Let me uh, crack this open. So when, when, you, when you crack this <clears throat> bolt loose up here, you wanna have your hands on the vibrating presser foot, otherwise this is going to happen. This is going to fall. Okay, So that's the uh, one of the number one problems that we have is people come in and it's not sewing and they, they see that nice bolt back there and they put a crescent wrench on it and they turn it and then this thing goes slamming down. And so uh, 
and then they walk away. They tighten it back up and walk away. That's one of the problems. So, so I'm just going to raise this up to about five or six millimeters. I'm going to lock it back down right here, and you can see the difference in the operating height. So now that I've, I've increased the operating height of the walking presser foot, the operating height of the lifting presser foot has decreased significantly. It only goes up maybe maybe a millimeter and a half, maybe two millimeters. Okay, so you can see the, a huge disparity in in the heights. So really, what I need to do now is I need to I need to correct that. <coughs> so let's just let's just measure measure these. We'll do the outside one first. Okay, so the outside one is. Lifting pressure foot is just under just under two millimeters. We'll call it. I'm gonna write these numbers down here. So we'll call it 1.8 millimeters. I'm gonna find the operating height, the maximum height of the walking pressure foot, which is right there. It's gonna be probably about. I'm guessing probably about five point something. Right there. Okay, so just a little over five. Of course it comes on now. So this one here is about probably about five point five point five roughly. About five and a half. So our vibrating foot, our vibrating foot is now is now five and a half millimeters, and our lifting is 1.8. So what I need to do is I need to find halfway between those two, okay, and that's where I need to bring my vibrating presser foot to because my vibrating presser foot is is way up here. My lifting presser foot only comes up to here. So as I bring this down, the lifting presser foot is going to come up. So I need to find out where halfway is between those two, and I need to adjust the vibrating presser foot to that point. So this is 7.3, so I need to come to about 3. Point. So if I add these two together, it's 7.3 divided in half. That's uh, 3.7, roughly 3.6 millimeters, roughly is what I need to bring the vibrating presser foot down to. So Again, I bring the vibrating presser foot to its highest point of travel, which is right there. I'm going to put this on here, and I'm just going to keep this uh, wrench on this nut so that when I get it set in place, all I have to do is just grab it and tighten it. So I'm going to loosen this nut right here, and then I. I kept a hold of this thing. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can drop it down, raise it. You're still going to have to come, bring this up to about 3.6, 3 3.5 millimeters. Okay. And so that is. That's about 3.5 right there. Just a skosh more. So I'm good, so now I'm just holding it and I'm gonna lock it down. All right. So I'm just gonna cycle this through a couple times and then we're just gonna remeasure the operating heights. You can see that the uh, operating the operating height of the lifting presser foot significantly increased. So we'll we'll just check it first. Bring it up to its highest point. And it is okay. Wow, it's about uh, it's just under five. So we'll call it about four point eight. Four point eight. 
and the operating height of this maximum height is oh okay yep so about three so I didn't raise it enough or I brought it down too much however you want to look at it yeah this is a, this about two and a half about two and a half <clears throat> so I need to bring this I need to bring this up about about one millimeter it's gonna bring the lifting presser foot down a millimeter and uh, again we'll put this on here keep control on your presser foot and we're just gonna raise this about a millimeter yeah there we go okay so that's good and we'll cycle this through and measure this again so measure the outside one That's our height, and we're at about about four. And this here has it at about 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 three. So. We're gonna to need to raise this just, just a little bit, just a little bit more here. All right. There we go. That might be it. Okay, so this one here is now about three and a half. This is is right at three and a half too. So now we have them both at the same operating height. Uh, you're gonna want to make sure you do your final, just final cinch of that, and tighten up your lifting or your uh, your vibrating presser foot tension. Doesn't have to be all the way in. Just enough to hold the material, press down, and uh, hold the material as it feeds through. So that's usually probably pretty good right there. All right. So that is adjusting the operating heights of the feed dogs, or yeah, the presser feet. So once we get that done, once we get both of those adjusted so that they are operating at the same height, if the height was like really, really high, like at six millimeters, you would, you would want to bring it down bring both of them down evenly to about four millimeters. If they were operating and they were both at the same height but it was only like two millimeters, you would want to bring both of them up together. And and to do that, if if we could go back here again, <clears throat> that's where that's where this this wing nut comes in. So now that we have the feet operating at the same height correctly, if they were too low and we needed to bring them up to like three and a half, four millimeters, we would loosen this and raise this up and we would recheck it to make sure that we're at now at three and a half, four millimeters. If we were too high, we would loosen this and push this down and drop it down from like say six millimeters to, to three and a half to four millimeters, which is the correct operating range. Okay, but because we set this before, just because I know that that's where it kind of needs to be, um, we don't really have to do this now because we're, we're operating at the correct height. But if you had to adjust it, both of them together to, this, to the correct height, that's how you would do it right there.